first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my wife that her problem with our daughter and son-in-law is her problem and not mine? Pretty much the title, but some background story first. My wife, 60, and I, 63, have seven children, 35 male, 33 female, 29 male, 23 female, 20 male, and 20 female. I only listed six children because one child died when she was three. She would have been 28. After she died, my wife and I got into our own deep depressions. I threw myself into work. My wife found other ways to deal with her grief and started a short affair with a man. They broke it off when I found out and I took her back. We decided to try to be a family again. But my wife found out she was pregnant with 23 by this man. I decided to raise the child as my own as the father was not ready to be a father. He was only 19 years old at the time. 23 always knew she was a little different. We'll have brown hair and she's blonde. But we didn't tell her the truth about her biological father until she was 18. She was surprised and upset, but eventually accepted it. I was always close to her, and even though it was rough for a few years, we're closer than ever. My other daughter, 33, started dating a man Jack. This turned out to be 23's bio dad. Before it gets weird, keep in mind he and 33 are only 10 years apart in age, and is closer to her age than ours. They eventually ended up marrying, been married a year now. I'm only human, so I admit I did have a problem at first, but I've come to accept it. He treats my daughter well, and they have a lot of common interests. Eventually, 23 and I ended up telling the family the truth about her parentage when 33 started dating Jack. Everyone was weirded out at first, but did come to peace with it. But the problem is my wife. Since 33 started dating Jack, my wife has yelled and screamed at her to break it off. I hardly see 33 anymore because when she visits, my wife starts shouting at her that what she's doing is wrong. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. He was a dumb kid who made a mistake. I haven't seen my daughter since Thanksgiving, and I told my wife I was going to go play mini golf with her this weekend. My wife was furious with me. She was upset that I would not cut 33 out of my life, cut Jack out, spent time with 33, among other many things. I told her she was being angry for no reason, and if she has a problem with them, then it's her problem and not mine. She called me an a-hole and is not speaking to me. I'm sleeping in the spare bedroom. I wonder if what I said was too harsh. Maybe I should have supported my wife in her anger, but I honestly cannot see how her anger is justified. She's literally the only person who has a problem with this, and she's the one being aggressive towards our children and son-in-law. I tend not to agree with aggressive people, but what does everyone else think? Now for the top comments. On the one hand, I do find it kind of gross that one sister is dating her other sister's dad. But you know what else is kind of gross? Cheating on your grieving husband and the father of your children with a barely legal teenager when you're 35. So glass houses and stones and all that. The most important people in this are 23, 33 and Jack. They're all okay with it and that's what matters. And just because she doesn't like it doesn't give her the right to dictate your feelings on the matter. Yes, you're married but you're still your own people. Not a hole. I too always thought 23 and 33 were the most important people in this situation. And my wife and I were always just peripherals. Obviously, she sees it differently. I gotta say, you're probably the most zen dude I've seen here. You approached and came to terms with some very emotional heavy situations with calm, rational, non-selfish approach which is something not that many people in general are capable of. All in all, even if you were harsh, you spoke the truth and you didn't do it from a position of maliciousness, but rather not caving into consequences of another person's actions. So firm not a day-hole, in my opinion. Keep up the good work. Your kids have a great father. Not a day-hole. It's normal you want to maintain a relationship with 33. The whole situation is a mess, but you seem to try and make the best out of it. I assume your wife is projecting her feelings of guilt, and seeing her son-in-law keeps that guilt present. But that's an issue she has to work through. I really wish she would seek some help, like therapy. She went after we reconciled, but that was over 20 years ago. I think she never went again. Not a hole What a freaking mess. But honestly, if 23 and 33 and Jack are all fine with it, then okay, I guess. Your wife needs to face the music and let the whole family just move on. That being said, it is really weird that he somehow found 33 after an affair with your wife. 
Like that doesn't seem at all like a coincidence, and it's very strange. Maybe not wrong, but strange. I thought it was strange too. I also kept questioning if it was a coincidence, but eventually I let go of my conspiracy theories. Lol. How they met was he came into 33's bag for an auto loan. It went from there. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife a helicopter mom after she called the place my son applied at? My son James just turned 16 this month and he decided he wanted to start working a part-time job. Just to have some extra spending money and to start saving up. He hasn't had much luck. I doubt many places are interested in hiring a teen with limited hours to work. James started to get annoyed with my wife after he found out she submitted a few applications for him. We had a whole talk about that and reminded her that James wants to do this job hunting on his own. Over a week ago, James applied at this local clothing store he likes to shop at since he's familiar with the place. He was told the usual line when he spoke to the hiring manager. We'll review your application and give you a call. He was really hoping to get this one, but after a week, he figured they were not gonna call. Earlier when I got home, there was some tension. James was locked in his room and my wife seemed upset. I spoke to him first and he told me my wife called the store earlier and berated the hiring manager for giving my son false hope and lied to him about giving him a call when they clearly weren't going to. James heard a call from upstairs because she was yelling and when he confronted my wife, she said she was just angry on his behalf. That they should have called him anyways to let him know he didn't get the job. But obviously, they're only going to call applicants they actually plan to hire. He's angry at my wife right now for interfering, and now he's going to be too embarrassed to go to that store again since they know who he is. I also confronted my wife, and she kept saying she was only looking out for him. However good her intentions were, I told her she needed to stop being a helicopter mom here, or she would ruin opportunities for him by interfering. My wife went to our room and shut the door. James wants an apology from her for embarrassing him. My wife says she did nothing wrong and is mad at me for calling her that. She said I was the one being an a-hole for not caring if our son finds a job and it's not fair for me to criticize her when she at least gives a damn. With the way she's being right now, I have to ask if maybe I went too far and was an a-hole for calling her a helicopter mom. Now for the top comments. At least your son recognizes that his mother is way out of line. That saves you the worry that he will grow up to be weak and scared because of an overbearing mother. Not a day hall. He needs to start putting his apps in without telling his mother where she can't call if she doesn't know, unless she has a tracking program on his phone. Shouldn't really have to live like that though, should he? Not a day hall. What your wife accomplished is everyone knowing your son as the guy whose mom calls and berates the manager for not hiring the guy. What did she actually want to accomplish with her little shouting match? Angry on behalf of the son? Nah, that's a load of bull. She's actively interfering in your son's life, making her a helicopter parent. Absolutely agreed. My son is 13. He's been to all the camps at its local indoor skate rink. They pretty much promised him a job once he was old enough. Dude still has to go through interviews, submitting his non-existent resume. I'm not stepping in at all. He's pretty much been promised a position. I'm not involved. If little bruv mess it up, we'll talk. I cannot fathom the entitlement of any parent getting involved in their kid's attempt at being independent. Edit. Of course, I'll help him with interview techniques. Role play the interview. Help him make his resume. I just mean that I won't hold his hand, slash force this place to take him. Not day hall. One call from a parent will send any teen's application to the bin. She owes your son an apology and needs to step back. I think it is only fair if son would call her mother's workplace and berate her manager for making her work hard. She should have an easier schedule and more money. Agreed. And just jumping on this thread to leave a link to Ask a Manager, a website all about workplace behavior slash norm slash etiquette slash etc. Alison Green gets questions all the time about helicopter parents, usually from the hiring manager who has to deal with them. And it never works out for the child who is being helicoptered. Ever. They never get hired. And if they somehow slip through and get a job, they're usually fired after their parent oversteps in their workplace. Not day hall. And your son will really suffer if your wife continues with this. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not canceling my doctor appointment and causing my husband's guests to leave? 
me female 26 and my husband male 29, moved out of our hometown right after we got married. He's very close to his friends that he met from high school. He tries to use every opportunity to see them in person and spend time talking to them. He heard that three of them were visiting our city for two days, and they wanted to visit him the day before they leave the city. He was so excited. Prepared everything for their visit and stood at the door waiting for them for an hour. They arrived at four. I made coffee and brought sweets so my husband can spend more time talking to them. Then he suddenly looked at the clock, which was 5 p.m., and told me to go upstairs so he could talk to me privately. My husband freaked out, saying he had an important meeting with a client via Zoom and it'd take about 40 minutes for it to be over and ask if I could stay with his guest till then. I reminded him I had an appointment with a doctor at 5.15 and couldn't skip it. He asked me to cancel it and stay with the guests. He didn't even want to hear my response, just rushed out for his meeting. I got dressed and went downstairs. I told his guests that my husband had a 40-minute meeting and I had an important appointment with a doctor. Told them they could wait or leave if they didn't want to wait. They chose to leave and I went to my appointment. In 45 minutes, I got an angry call from him asking why I told his guests to leave instead of sitting with them till he was done with his meeting. Said he missed his friends and wanted to talk to them more. He said I always let him down and act unsupportive, although he always entertained my family when they came to visit. Truth is, he just loves spending hours talking to my brother because they share a lot of interests, so he wasn't doing it for me. He argued about how I was being negative and how his friends must have felt awful being kicked out like that. And he said I could have gone to my appointment 40 minutes later and explained to the doctor. But that's not how doctor appointments work. We argued back and forth. Everyone in the waiting room was staring at me because of how loud my husband was talking. Till he hung up on me, then sent me a text with the word SELFISH in capital letters. I just couldn't stay. I've waited for a week for my appointment. I understand he misses his friends, but this appointment was important as I've been constantly dealing with an unbelievable pain and needed to see the doctor as soon as possible. I've been on medication, but it's not doing much. Just sitting in the waiting room is exhausting in itself, so it's not like I went out with friends. Not day hall. Does he seriously think you can show up 40 minutes later for a doctor's appointment and say, oh, Sorry, I'm late. My husband had a client to meet with and I had to entertain his friends. How would it be fair to the doctor to cancel at the last minute when your spot can't be filled? Exactly. At this point, I really think he was being unreasonable. I don't know what other options he might have had, but to ask me to cancel my doctor's appointment is unreasonable. Besides, I'm not close with his friends, so sitting with them for 40 minutes would have been unpleasant. Oh my god. Not today, Hall. Even if he loved his friends, you weren't healthy. He was being selfish, OP. Not you. Horribly, horribly selfish. You waited a week, and pain that isn't managed by medication. Rescheduling or being late would have made your pain appear less severe. And goodness knows what could have gone wrong medically if you just ignored it for his buddies. Remember, you were in pain, and your husband called you selfish for not entertaining his friends when you could barely sit in a waiting room. You couldn't entertain, you couldn't reschedule. I can't get over that you're in pain for at least a week, and it's like, just be late or reschedule, and if you don't, you're selfish and unsupportive. That is cause for concern, I'm not gonna lie. What happens if you get sick? What happens if you have something wrong someday? An injury? He's not proving to be supportive now. Not day hall. His poor planning is not your responsibility. Not day hall. I have tried to consider how you might be in the wrong, and have concluded there is no logical way to believe that you are. Your husband should have gone down to his guests and explained he forgot his client meeting and you had an appointment and asked them nicely to stay. The way he handled it was rude, to not just you but also to them. Yep, if he had asked them, they could well have stayed. But his weird behavior of just disappearing and having his wife explain he'll be gone for 40 minutes is super rude. If I was a guest, I'd have felt I was imposing and left too. Nothing to do with Opie's behavior at all. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for adopting my niece and making my daughter share her room? My sister passed away last year due to cancer. We got at it at a very late stage, and it all happened so quickly over a pretty traumatic four months. My sister passed away so suddenly that none of us were really expecting it, and remained hopeful and somewhat in disbelief till the end. 
My husband and I love our niece, six female, like she's our own, and her piece of crap father was never in the picture. We definitely weren't going to let her go into the system and decided to go ahead with the adoption process. My daughter, 18 female, is commuting to college from home to save on money. We live in a two-bedroom apartment, and we told our daughter she's gonna need to share her room with her cousin. However, she's been angry, saying that it's not fair for her to give up her privacy and that she needs her own space to get her work done and that our place is crowded enough as it is. I told her she didn't really have a say in it as she isn't even paying rent and that she's being very, very selfish. Am I the a-hole? Edit, we can't afford a larger place or we would have obviously moved. We've suggested our daughter study at the library or work part-time so she can pitch in on rent and we can move to a larger place, but she thinks both are unfair. No a -holes here. I think your daughter's concerns are legitimate, and I think you have done the right thing by your niece in a very tricky situation. It sounds like short of magicking a new larger home. There's not much any of you can do right now. You need to ensure that your daughter has a space to study. I'm so sorry for your loss. I don't know. The daughter is unwilling to consider a part-time job or studying at the library, refusing to make any kind of compromise in a very tragic situation. When I was 18, I was willing to do anything to get away from home, so things like working and getting my own place was not a punishment. I know my own history doesn't matter here, but it's the reason why I have a very hard time sympathizing with daughter. Not they all. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.